This right here is Mini Joel, designed by Wexter. It's a really cool, easy to print model that I just adore. In fact, it's my wife's favorite version of me. I did notice some cooling issues on this model after printing it on my stock Prusa i3 Mark III 3D printer. So I printed it again. I printed four on the stock Prusa i3 Mark III with a Mini Joel facing each of the cardinal directions, north, west, east, and south. I figured this would be the best way to determine if it was a cooling issue with this cooling duct, the fan duct right here. But this means, you know, there are new parts to test. So I should probably print the same thing on a Prusa with an upgraded cooling duct. So I did. I printed four mini Joel's, one facing each direction, and I've upgraded the cooling duct to the new R3 model. Let's find out if your stock Prusa actually needs these upgraded pieces to improve the quality of your printed models. And let's do it right here on 3D Printing Nerd. This episode of 3D Printing Nerd is sponsored in part by Wexter, the creator of Mini Joel and many other awesome mini models. Go find them at myminifactory.com. I have two Prusa i3 Mark III 3D printers. I have a stock one and I had a stock one. And a lot of people have asked me, Joel, why don't you upgrade to the R3 extruder body and the R3 parts? They're printable parts, available at prusa3d.com. You know, I, I don't do that because I haven't had an issue. The Prusa i3 Mark III stock has been one of the most consistent experiences in a 3D printer I've had. I would classify this as one of the best machines that I have available to me in my studio here. I know that it does have some issues, just like with everything, but just like with any tool, once you learn about the issues and you learn a good workflow for that tool, then then you have yourself a really well working tool that works with your workflow. So I never upgraded. I never went with the new extruder body and I never went with the new fan duct. I didn't see any reason to, but you know what? I, I have two of these machines. Why not keep one stock and why not change one just to see what the differences are? And after printing mini Joel, I'm really curious to see what happens because A, I print with these machines all the time, but I had to leave the mini Joels on the plates in order for the video to happen. So I couldn't use these again until I filmed another video video and two might be interesting because there are some issues with the overhangs that happen in the um, <clears throat> crotch area and there are some overhangs for the hands and there are slight overhangs uh, for the glasses and my little lazy eye here. The hair is fantastic. It turns out great. So with these two machines, they actually, I think they're great test platforms. They sat next to each other on the same table. They're both running the same updated current firmware. They're both running Prusament, the Pearl Mouse Prusament. They're both running PEI sheets on the, the removable bed. The, the Prusament was not hanging onto this rail when it was printing because it was off on something else. Even the isopropyl alcohol was the same bottle and I used the same paper towel to wipe down each bed before printing. As far as a test goes, I tried to keep everything as similar between the two machines and I think I did a decent job, but now it's time to inspect these. Like I said before, each collection of mini Joels, there's four of them and each one is facing north, east, south, west. Never eat soggy waffles. So the goal today is actually pretty simple. It's to examine the models printed on the stock Prusa and compare them to the models printed on the modified Prusa to see if the fan duct is necessary. And then we'll see what happens. Oh, and, and just as we're going here, this fan duct right here, it is recommended that you print these in ABS or PETG. In my Ultimaker 2 Plus, I had MVO Engineering's carb-loaded PET, and I printed them out, the fan duct and the little arm right here, uh, in my Ultimaker 2 Plus. It took about 40 minutes. I used recommended settings as they printed from the Prusa website, so full explo full explosion. Full explosion! <laughs> Full disclosure, there we go, now we're good. Let's get down to it. So what I'll do is I will take these down and I will mark them so that I know which is which, but I'll mark them in a way so you don't know which is which. And then you will compare Mini Joel North, Mini Joel East, Mini Joel South, and Mini Joel West 
stock versus modified. And then at the end of the episode, I'll tell you which one is which. And for those keeping score at home, you can find out if you think stock did better or if the R3 fan duct did better. This is exciting. <laughs> So many mini jewels. On the bottoms of the feet, I've made markings and I have a key in my desk drawer right here and I'll, I'll get out the key when it's time to find out. But now, let's see, let me match up who is with what. So, these are all mixed up. Huh. And there we go. Aww. There is our mini jewel models. I'm gonna go with pairs. North pairs, East pairs, uh, South pairs, and West pairs. And we will get some close-ups of these. You'll keep track at home. And then at the end, we'll reveal who is from which machine. For testing, I'm defining North, East, West, and South. And I'm doing it from my perspective. So if I was looking at the front of the Prusa machines, then the Joel in the very, very back would be facing the North direction. So I'm going to use that right here. North, East, west, south. And I'm faced them in four different directions because of the fan ducts. They're blowing air. If the nozzle's here, they're blowing air this way and kind of around. So we get to see the overhangs and the details from different angles. First up, Mini Joel's from the north. I've set up this camera right here. And once I hit record, it's actually going to provide you a much closer look at some of these models. The idea being, I want you to see up close to see any imperfections that may be because of the cooling. So for example, these are North models right here. These are North and uh, you can take a look. They look pretty good, I would say. Look at the hands. That's one of the things you wanna look at right there. The hands on either side, right there on the front as well. You should be able to see some cooling artifacts there. Let's see if I can give you a better view. There we go. So that's where uh, the legs meet underneath. And that's, well, that's what it looks like when the models are printed facing the north orientation. Just in case I brought out a light to hopefully illuminate issues that there may be. So you've looked at north. Now let's look at east. Honestly, the hair, the face, the body, it looks pretty similar. What I'm worried about are those overhangs. I mean, I'm looking in the viewfinder of the camera and I can't tell any differences. So now we'll go with South. Southie, here we go. Again, the, the front of the model and the hair of the model look just fine. What we're really concerned about is the bottoms where the hands would be and the, uh, crotch. <laughs> so there's the, the crotch area. So that's where the hands are on that side. And then we can flip it over to that side. Last but not least, west, facing west. Uh, okay, so model looks great, I think. The hair looks fantastic. And again, just with the, the bottom there. So we've got this area. At the hands right there, right there. Okay, cool. What started this all is this model, Mini Joel by Waxster, and it's available at my mini factory. I hope you go out, get it, print it large, print it small, print it in different colors. But now we have these in front of us and we have to determine if for us, the R3 updated parts for the Prusa i3 Mark III actually did something for us. Get my paper here. Uh, so just, um, just a quick word. Uh, I don't have the best eyes in the world. Uh, I will be the first person to admit that. Personally, these looked all the same to me. <laughs> However, according to the key, dark green was north. Brown was east, a lighter green was south, and then the bright green was west. And uh, if it had one dot, one stood for O, which is original, two dots stood for R, which is R3. 
there you have it. Uh, again, I wish I wish I could come to some sort of conclusion, but as I look at these pieces, they look they look the same. The bridging across the overhangs looks the same. The cooling inconsistencies look the same. I don't know. I, I'm willing to bet there's going to be ways that I can improve the look of this model. Maybe more perimeters, maybe less cooling, more cooling, more infill, no infill. I don't know at this point, but it gives me a base to look from. But from my very untrained, old, poor, corrected eyes, I do not see an advantage when printing this model between the R3 updated parts and the stock parts. That's my findings. What are your findings? Have you had experience with these actually producing better prints? Or have you not strayed from the stock Prusa i3 and had wonderful experiences? I'd love to know down in the comments below, but uh, for now, I'll do some more testing. If there's any specific models you want me to try between stock and R3 cooling, I will give that a go. I have not updated the extruder on this because I don't actually have any issues with the cooling of the Noctua fan. It gets through just fine. Your mileage may vary. There you have it. I'd love to hear what you think down in the comments below. Don't forget to subscribe, ring that bell. All sorts of ways to support what we do on the channel are in the description. Beyond all that, don't forget to hug each other more. I love you guys, as always. High five.